I'm Diogo de Cushmao and I work at the Met Office Hadley Centre as a senior scientist in the Climate Impacts team. Um, I work primarily in marine impacts and sea level rise area and I'm very much interested in translating and bridging the gap between science and impacts so that people can understand what those impacts will actually mean in the future. Um, we've been working on mapping uh, the impacts of sea level rise and giving people an, an access, easy access, uh, being it through maps, uh, web access to those impacts, making it much easier for people to understand what climate change will mean to them. I think climate change is important because it's a great challenge to the way we handle risk. We lived in, for centuries in a world where we consider, or we could consider, the climate to be stable and constant. Actually, we now know the climate is changing, and we need to fit this information into the way we handle environmental risk. I'm Joanne Camp, and I'm a seasonal tropical storm prediction scientist in the Met Office Hadley Centre. Over the last few years, we've seen a huge benefit of high resolution climate models in the prediction of tropical storms across all timescales in the Met Office. In particular, the generation of seasonal forecasts in the recent years has benefited both the insurance industry and energy sectors. Forecasts for tropical storm frequency and also their collective intensity has allowed the insurance industries to incorporate these into their policy decisions and this has enabled them to reduce the economic value and economic impacts of these events. Climate change is important particularly for studies looking at tropical cyclones. It is projected using high resolution models that the intensity of tropical storms may increase in the future. This may put further stresses on coastal regions that are already at risk from tropical cyclones and other effects such as sea level rise. One fact people should know about climate change is that it is likely that the global frequency of tropical storms will either remain unchanged or actually decrease with the warming climate. There is however a lot less certainty about the changes in frequency in individual ocean basins with recent modelling studies showing both increases and decreases in tropical storm frequency by the end of the 21st century. Climate change is far from being a global phenomenon. Um, there's an awful lot of regional aspects, in increased drought, increased rainfall in some places, changes in temperature. And it's very important that we're able to model this accurately in the Hadley Centre so that we can provide predictions of the impact on the human population in the various different regions. I'm Vicky Pope, I'm Head of Climate Change Advice. Climate change information is very important because it has the potential to affect every aspect of life on the planet. Um, so it's really important that we're able to communicate climate science so that people can make their own judgments about what choices we need to make in the future. I'm Mark McCarthy, I'm a climate research scientist working in uh, climate impact model development. Um, so why is it important to consider urban microclimates in the context of global climate change? Uh, well, over half of the world's population uh, now considered to live within urban areas, uh, and that figure is expected to, to, to double by uh, the 2050s. Uh, but despite this, urban areas still account for only a very small proportion of the uh, global land surface. So urban areas are a real focal point of vulnerability of human society to climate change. Um, however, cities also account for about 70% of global energy demand. So they're also focal points for any mitigation and adapt adaptation strategies we might have for dealing with climate change. Most communication about climate change concentrates on the negative impacts it might have. In many areas of the world, the social, environmental and economic impacts will indeed be severe. However, in certain regions, or for some organisations, there will be opportunities. It is important for the well-being of people, plants and animals around the world that we identify both. Hi, I'm Stephen Hardiman and I'm a stratospheric research scientist. Understanding the stratospheric ozone layer is important because Stratospheric ozone prevents much solar UVB radiation from reaching the Earth's surface, causing skin cancer and harm to other forms of life. Recently, the stratospheric ozone layer has come under threat because of emissions of CFCs. And understanding how these CFCs have led to ozone depletion, and in particular the discovery of the Antarctic ozone hole, helped lead to the Montreal Protocol and its amendments, which have been extremely successful in halting emissions of ozone depleting substances. One fact that people should know about climate change is that it's not just about greenhouse gases. There's an awful lot of other influences on the climate system. For example, aerosols reflect and absorb sunlight 
and therefore can lead to a cooling or an additional warming depending upon um, their absorption characteristics. Aerosols come from a various, various different sources such as man-made pollution and also from, for example, the recent volcano and these can impact the Earth's radiation balance and hence impact climate. I'm Bill Collins, I'm the Manager of Atmospheric Composition and Climate. Now the Hadley Centre has been at the forefront of uh, developing climate models over the 20 years of its existence. These models started off very simply in the beginning but have become more and more complex as time has progressed. And now we're able to represent much of the, the Earth system, the components that we see when we look out of the window. These are adding extra realism by including trees, other plants, life in the ocean, the chemistry of the atmosphere. And by adding these components, the Met Office Hadley Centre model is now probably the most comprehensive there is, particularly when uh, considering the submissions to the upcoming IPCCC report. What's the one fact people should know about climate change? I think people should know that our confidence in the future climate is not only based on the output of complex climate model, but is largely supported by our understanding of the physical processes that drive that change. Climate change is important because it has the potential to have an impact on every aspect of life on the planet. And clearly, um, we need to make sure that we understand those implications uh, and we can make choices on the basis of that. My name is David Hine. I'm part of the Regional Predictions Group in the Hadley Center. My job title is coordinator of the Precy Regional Climate Modeling System. All countries that are part of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change are required to assess their vulnerability to climate change. The main tool for assessing this is generally climate models run on supercomputers. Now this presents a problem for some parts of the world where access to supercomputers is limited by costs or infrastructure. To address this, we had developed the Precy Regional Climate Modeling System. It is a regional climate model which runs on a regular PC that runs the Linux operating system. This is a low cost, low infrastructure way for scientists in developing countries to assess their vulnerability to climate change. Now, why is this important to us? All countries, the devel developed countries, are required to transfer their technology to developing countries to assist them in this process. And that's what Precy does for the United Kingdom. One fact people ought to know about climate change is that half the carbon dioxide that humans have emitted so far into the atmosphere has been taken up by plants and by the oceans. Now, if this uptake changes in the future due to changes in plants and, and oceans under a warmer climate, then we may not be as so fortunate to have that uh, cleaning of the atmosphere for us, which could lead to even uh, further consequences for the climate. Key achievements here at the Met Office include developing of a global aerosol model, state of the art, that uh, predicts the amount of uh, sunlight that's absorbed and reflected by the aerosols and also the impact on clouds. There are some very basic facts about climate change that are very clear. So there's overwhelming evidence that the climate is changing and that at least part of that change is due to man's activities. And also that if we continue to emit greenhouse gases that we will see substantial changes over the coming centuries.